hello again uh, from my side and from Irma's side as well. Um, just to get us started, we um, want to provide a quick overview of what we have planned for today. Um, so first, at, we will start with providing a bit of um, terminology. So basically, um, a, a few definitions of what we'll be talking about. Then we will give you an overview of the search process and the tools we've been using so far. We'll then delve into the main part of the webinar, which is can I help with identifying relevant references, designing search strategies, reviewing a search strategy and running, exporting and aggregating search results. Um, we'll speak a bit about the environmental impacts and then take a look at conclusions and our personal outlook. Um, first of all, we have a question or two questions for you to be more specific um, to get a glimpse of your experience and your main role in systematic review production and your experience with AI so far. We now have the results. So most of the people online here, the majority of people online are systematic reviewers who also conduct searches. And then we have systematic reviewers and information specialists and medical librarians with experience in searching for systematic reviewers and also a few statisticians in the call. Great. The second question we have for you is, do you use AI for searching? Yeah, wow. So 49% has not yet used AI for searching or is not using it. Some use it occasionally, 38% and 13% use it on a regular basis. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. That's great. So we have an idea of whom we are speaking to today and what your experience is. Um, so beginning with the terminology, um, we would like to start off with um, speaking about automation tools. So um, automation tools are generally understood as software or tools that aid with the execution in systematic review tasks without replacing the skills needed for their conduct. Um, whereas AI is a technology that um, performs tasks that would ordinarily require biological brain power to accomplish, such as making sense of spoken language, learning behaviors, or solving problems. Um, there are two types that we would like to define for this talk. So one of them is machine learning. That's when an algorithm is trained on large data sets, allowing it to recognize patterns and make assumptions and predictions. So the training data helps the machine learning algorithm to teach the machine how to respond to similar data in the future. We have two types of machine learning. One is supervised learning, where the machine learns through data that has been labeled by a human. And we have unsupervised learning, which is when the machine processes loads of data provided by a human and discovers patterns on its own. Large language models are a type of machine learning model that is designed for natural language processing tasks, such as language generation. LLMs are language models with many parameters and are trained with self-supervised learning on a vast amount of text. Basically, they first lang learn language, like words, phrases, and complete sentences, and then they learn the context to predict what comes next in a sentence. So LLMs can generate human-like text, rewrite content, summarize content, and converse. Um, for supporting the search process of systematic reviews, information specialists have been using several tools that have led to efficiency gains in the past five years. Some of these tools are newer than others, and while some are based on machine learning, not every automation tool uses AI. So among the tools that Irma and I and many of our colleagues have been using for designing the str search strategy, there are for text analysis, PubReminer, JLMesh Analyzer, 
Voyant Tools, Voss Viewer, or tools like Search Builder and Met Syntax. For the search strategy construction, we're using a tool called Lit Search R. And for the task of syntax translation, we've been using SRA Polyglot Search Translator, which is now being called Terra. The deduplication task can be aided by tools like Deduplic, SRI Deduplicator, Covidence, or Ryan. Full text retrieval um, can be partially automated by using the EndNote Find Full Text feature. And screening reduction has been accomplished by using Cochrane Screen for Me um, service, Covidence, or the classifiers or custom classifiers that you can build with an Epi reviewer. The search process can be broken down into specific tasks, and I would like to run you through them to understand um, what the process consists of. So first, it consists in identifying relevant seed references, either by communicating to the people you are running the search for or by uh, searching uh, for them yourself. Um, then you design the search by identifying the main search concepts. So identifying relevant text words from the title and abstract, normalized language, truncation and phrases. Identify relevant control vocabulary, for example, mesh terms or entry terms. We then construct the combination of concepts using Boolean or adjacency operators. And we test the search strategy for recall and precision and implement changes. Then we translate the search syntax to other databases. And we have the whole search strategy peer reviewed by a knowledgeable person uh, that understands search strategies. We then run the search strategies in different databases or database interfaces. We export the results from different databases interfaces and combine them into one set. And then we deduplicate the merged search results, document the search, import them into a screening tool. And if the search is to be updated, we can do this um, on a specific uh, time point or continually, depending on whether we are um, supporting a living systematic review. So searching uh, is an iterative process and it involves clarifying and refining the search topic based on relevant references, as we've already heard. The search strategy or so-called query development, testing terms, developing queries, determining sources, databases, websites, search engines, um, executing the search queries in the source to generate results, and then adapting the search strategies or queries based on human feedback or evaluating its recall and precision. Now, um, this is a table from a very recent scoping review I was involved in, led by the team of um, in Freiburg, Cochrane Germany team. This preprint, uh, this was published as a preprint recently, and it provides us with an overview of the studies assessing LLM support for systematic review tasks. They were categorized by the authors um, according to their conclusions. So whether the LLM tool was promising, neutral or non-promising, they uh, identified a comparatively large number of studies that assessed searching. And the majority of these studies concluded that LLM use is not promising um, in this context. In contrast, we can see um, in the third um, column screening that uh, and data extraction that basically the majority of conclusions of these studies were positive or at least neutral. However, to get a sense um, of what AI in general and LLMs in particular can or cannot help us with, we need to consider what steps of the search process they are used for and what the goal of the AI support is. <laughs> 